Please welcome Dr. Delano to talk about Thank you very much. If walls could talk, what would they say? What story could they tell us? What memories do they have? What I'd like to suggest to you in the next few minutes is that they do have a story to tell. And making connections, making connections is one of the delights of being human. I'm going to make a, a connection among three different uh, sources of information. Uh, one, the walls themselves. Two, old land surveys dating from the 1700s. <clears throat> and three, modern airborne uh, surveys. I believe that they, putting those uh, disparate uh, sources of information together, I think a story can emerge that's perhaps surprising. Professor Robert Thorson, James Yukon, <coughs> wrote, these walls are cultural icons, <coughs> a reminder of a slower, simpler life before the modern era. Now they stand neglected, their value forgotten. But the effort that it took to manufacture, to build these, I stand in awe. New York and New England uh, during the latter part of the 17th century and the early 18th century, generated nearly 250,000 miles of stone walls. They were done by around 200,000 family farmers that existed in New York and New England. They are gone, but these stand as remnants of a once vibrant culture, and I stand in awe of them. Notice that the land was largely deforested. These were largely farm communities. They had been surveyed by intrepid surveyors that used compasses, magnetic compasses, and chains such as what you see here. Each chain, 66 feet long, divided into 100 lengths each, and they would be dragged along along certain compass directions and boundaries of certain of land uh, would be worked at. Here, for example, is an example of a 1799 survey, one that we will be using in the next few minutes. It dates from June 17, a Monday, uh, 1799. And notice how it's constructed. There is text at the top. But then there are one, two, three, four, five. These are various segments of a property boundary uh, that went off in certain directions, certain compass directions. And the one that we'll be looking at is number five. Notice they made eights differently than we do today. Number five, north, 83 degrees west, 39.30 chains in length. So this particular boundary was around 2,600 feet uh, long, about half a mile. It will, be, it will be length number five that we'll be looking at just as an example of what might it remember. This is what the land looks like today. This is an image, recent image, of that property. You can see that there are two fields left. It is mostly gone back to forest. It was not forest at the time that the surveys were made. Within that image is wall number five. Here, from that 1799 survey, is the map that was constructed by that surveyor of Frederick Hainer, 
and his brother, Willemus Hainer. The area shown in red uh, is the area that we will look at, and specifically the nearly horizontal line, the red line at the top, is that 2,600 foot long boundary. It, is, it was, at the time, north 83 degrees west when it was surveyed, when that property boundary was surveyed, uh, on June 17, 1799. Notice 39.30 chains, about 2,600 feet in length. Skip to the next source of information. So you've seen some land, you're going to, you will see that again. But now let's look at some modern airborne surveys known as LIDAR. LIDAR was invented back in the 1970s and was used first uh, in, on Apollo 15 as it orbited the moon in 1972. 71, I'm sorry, 1971. Uh, it has now become uh, a very widely used uh, technology, and much of New York State has been lidar <laughs> It consists of light, detection, and ranging. We've all heard of radar, and we've heard of sonar. Uh, LIDAR is an acronym much like those two on the terms. What does LIDAR contribute uh, to this quest? <coughs> Just a reminder what that land looks like and the North 83 West uh, wall. This is a LIDAR image of that area. Notice the trees are gone. There are no trees. LIDAR, you can use software from the LIDAR imaging to remove the trees. The trees do not clutter the view. The, the North 83 West wall is this one again. These are stone walls. These lines that you see on this image are stone walls in the forests. They stand out beautifully. Stone walls. It gives you some sense of the industry and the effort that went into building all of these stone walls. They're all over the place. All over New England. Upstate New York, they're all the old <laughs> Next part. We're all familiar with the Earth having a magnetic field. We're all familiar, perhaps, with the Earth having two North Poles. One is the axis, the rotation axis of the planet itself. Earth rotates, of course, every 24 hours by its axis. That axis is a north polar axis. But the magnetic field of planet Earth does not, the north magnetic field does not, is not in the same place as the rotation axis. So there are two north poles. One is the polar rotation axis, and the other is the magnetic north. They are not the same place. Difference at this location here, the difference in angle between north, 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 um, magnetic north, and geographic, or, or in axis of rotation of the Earth, is around 13.4 degrees different now. About 13.4 degrees different now here, right now. But, and the magnetic field, of course, comes from fluid motion in the liquid powered core of the Earth, several thousand, a couple thousand miles below it. It hasn't always been that way. The Earth's magnetic field wanders. The compass direction today is not the compass direction it was yesterday, or even even, of course, in 1799. The Earth, the North Magnetic Pole, wanders. And it has wandered here according to the International Geomagnetic Reference Field Model 11. It has been constructed by a lot of effort by geophysicists. This is what it's done at this location here. Notice that back in 1600, the difference between the magnetic field north 
and the geographic north was around 16 degrees to top right. But over the last couple centuries, it has wandered down to about 5 degrees, to about 5 degrees in 1800, and then it's now back up to our, just over 13 degrees. So the Earth's magnetic field has been wandering. The LIDAR image of the north 83 west wall, the boundary, the northern boundary of Frederick Hainer's property in 1799. Using LIDAR, the 1799 land survey, we see that that wall is 88 degrees from true north, true geographic north. It was magnetic, 83 degrees west of north in 1799. What was the difference in the magnetic field between true north and magnetic north in, seven, in June 1799? It's the difference between 83 and 88. Five degrees. This is just one example. I simply showed you one of the dozens of walls that we've, we've measured, having gone back to, to the original 1800-ish uh, uh, land surveys uh, in the New York State Archives. Uh, this, then, is what the walls uh, show. Uh, the data that I'm showing you here, here in red is just an illustration of uh, the stone walls, in fact, being able to provide a, a memory of what the magnetic field of the Earth was, the direction of the Earth's magnetic field, uh, for the last couple of centuries. We know we can go back further. This is just a, uh, just a bunch of whistle uh, of what these uh, stone walls can remember and what they can derive. In summary, then, stone walls are stationary monuments. Once they're built, they're not going to get moved. Uh, the stone walls then, those stone walls that were on boundaries then, they are still there. When you can use the data uh, land surveys in concert then with LIDAR images, you can then reconstruct uh, the Earth's magnetic field directions uh, over time. Now when we first began this then, when we thought of what could stone walls, what kind of a story could stone walls, mundane, neglected, old, purposeless stone walls uh, today tell us. I think there are probably many other stories they can tell us, but this is but one of them. So the next time you go up to someone and say, I wonder what stone walls can say, tell them, I think that the stone walls can tell us something about the Earth's magnetic field. <laughs> Watch their reaction. <laughs> <laughs> But then the problem was wood 
Where's the wood coming from? Because the fence is rot. There are no more trees around. You're burning. Typical, the typical farm family. It has been estimated the typical town farm family. What did they use for fuel? To cook, to heat, to do anything. They use wood, and typically would use over 30 cord of wood per year. 30 per year. Forests go away real quick uh, when you're doing. At that point, then you're plowing and you're getting those stones out of the out of the field. And now there's a good use for stone. We are burning our extra time, so we have time for one more question. So, what's the definitive boundary debt? The stone wall or the vector described in the original survey? Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, the wall the boundary today, that, that line that we were just looking at, is in fact a modern boundary between two property owners. And they have, to, they have decided uh, that that wall will be the boundary. And a land survey, of course, the modern land survey will not quote North 83 West. They will say, here was that. Here it is. This is the last <laughs> <laughs>